On today's podcast, I am joined by Rima Jafali, who in 2019 took on her first full season of motorsport in the British F4 Championship. A number of top 10 results led her to continue on in the series for 2020, but in today's podcast, we'll be speaking about her journey into the sports and the barriers she's had to break down to make sure she gets to where she is here today. Hope you enjoy the podcast and thank you, Rima, for her time, as always. So, Rima, you're a Saudi Arabian racing driver who's about to enter their second season of Formula 4 here in the UK. Some people have a, a simple path to get into racing, but it's not quite been like that to you. So, growing up, was this something you wanted to do or has it been a bit more recent? Um, yeah, I mean, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it was it was very much, um, I would say, more recent than a uh, childhood goal. Um, you know, when I was growing up, I wasn't very exposed to motor motor racing or, or watching it. You know, I, I knew about Formula One and I knew about different things, but it wasn't in my vicinity. Um, it wasn't until I was in college that I started, um, you know, following it, understanding it. Um, and that's kind of when I took to motor motor racing. But I've always kind of enjoyed cars and loved that. Mm -hmm. um, so my passion for cars kind of is what drove me to, to motorsport. But um, yeah, uh, it wasn't until quite later in life. So maybe like in my 20, 20, 20, 20 I think. Wow, was the, okay. Uh, yeah, 19, 20, something like that. So when it got to the stage when you started watching it, what sort of drew you to it was there a part of it was it the speed or was it something else uh to be honest i was very like impressed by the fact that it wasn't it was not about the speed it was about like the tactics behind it how much it was involved in not just you know the racer but as well or the driver but the team behind it the strategy um you know i remember when i was first watching it i didn't understand a lot of like the rules and the, and you know the flags so i had like a notepad and i would note down blue flag meant this this you know like i, I didn't understand the, the 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 you know the crux of it but then i would watch kind of the pre-show and the post and like i'm just trying to understand and hear as much as i could about it and um and initially it was formula one that i followed for a while and then um I was introduced to um, like more endurance racing and um, followed that as well. And that's kind of when um, uh, racing became uh, an option or even a dream um, because I'm mean, generally I'm quite a realistic person and growing up, I never thought, oh yeah, I could be a racing driver just because I didn't have, you know, the things around me that allowed me to do that. So it wasn't even, a, it wasn't a dream really. Um, and then when I saw kind of in, in endurance racing or Le Mans, when I watched that in particular, I noticed that a lot of the drivers were older than me and yeah, they might have had more experience, but you know, there's like, there was pros, there was ams, there was a variety of different drivers mm -hmm. and kind of that's when it sparked the interest and I was like, there's, that's a possibility that I could do something there. Yeah. So the listeners might not know but in saudi arabia until a couple of years ago uh females weren't allowed to drive did that uh, sort of change anything like growing up you know dreams and you know i guess a perception of what you could do maybe in the future um i think so yeah i, I grew up in saudi and um there was like yeah i couldn't drive uh, to places but for me it's kind of what i knew and what i was accustomed mm. to um so like even though I like cars and I couldn't drive them on the road, I tried to get every chance that I could to get behind a car or um, just, you know, being involved in sport and being active. Um, and I think, um, you know, women only started driving in Saudi in, was it June 2018? Uh, so wow. very, very recently, like less than two years ago now. So it's definitely something that um, recently has come to the kingdom, but I myself have been driving, you know, since 2010. So mm -hmm. I have had, you know, luckily the opportunity to drive. Um, but yeah, back, being back home, it was kind of like, this is how it is, you know, and this is how I live. Um, and you just kind of got used to that. So when I could drive there, um, yeah, it was just it was very nice and it felt very empowering, definitely. So you didn't feel sort of restricted at all growing up that you could do this and you couldn't do that. Um, it was just sort of normal. Uh, yeah, to, to a certain extent. I mean, um, you know, there were things that like, for example, with sports and teams and, you know, the infrastructure wasn't there. The, mm -hmm. um, um, let's say like 
being a part of a, a team sport in one of my schools, there was no sports teams. And then I moved to another school and then I was able to like join the, the football team, join the basketball team. So like that was like, oh my God, I love this. This is fantastic. You know, I was able to put my energy into some somewhere. So like there was definitely, I wouldn't say there wasn't restrictions, but I was able to find my way through that, you know, whether it was joining a team here or whether it was like, um, you know, doing things with my friends, you know, we kind of had to be a little bit more imaginative and it wasn't just <laughs> given to us. We kind of had to go after what we wanted to do, basically. So it got to a point where you went to the United States to go to university. Um, around that sort of time, is it right that you started to get interested in motorsport? That was, uh, was that the start of the 2010s, like you were speaking yeah. about when you started driving as well? Yeah, yeah, very much so. I think, you know, going to university, like everyone, you kind of you leave home, you have that sense of like independence, you know, and you kind of just want to explore and see um, what's out there. And um, I was able to luckily to, to like venture in and even just start thinking about things. But in the States um, or where I was in particular in Boston, um, joining like track days and doing that sort of stuff wasn't as easy, let's say, as it is here in the UK. Um, you had to be a part of a club there and you had to like have a certain car and it wasn't just you just don't sign up onto track and you take your car. It was a lot more complicated um, and even in karting wise, you know, doing it wasn't as competitive. The, 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 or, or maybe it was, but I just didn't, I didn't have the right um, contacts or I didn't know where, where to go. Um, so for, for a while, like I remember at least a year or two years, just doing some research, trying to find where I can go. And I think Florida was one of the, the states in California where you can kind of go out and explore on track a little bit more freely. Um, so, uh, but before that, like in university, it was just kind of, I, I kind of like put it aside and I was like, okay, I can't do it right now. Um, but when I did come to the UK, cause I would visit often, um, I did get on the, get on track days here in like 2013. I think it was maybe my first track day in a mini Cooper that was lying around here in the house. And I was just like, you know what, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Um, and, uh, but yeah, it wasn't really, there wasn't, there was no real racing or nothing really until quite later on. So just to mention, you know, going to the United States and going to university there, what made you go halfway around the world to go to university? Cause I, I guess there might've been options back home. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I think part of it was just wanting to leave, you know, and experience something new. Mm. Um, and thankfully I had the opportunity to do that, um, uh, you know, back home being living with my parents, that's what it would have been, you know, living with my parents, going to university, and it wouldn't have been that much of a change. And I, I really did want that. Um, so, yeah, I was able to um, go to Boston and I studied. Um, I mean, I was thinking about studying so many different things and I wasn't sure and I'm not the most studious person, um, but I had a lot of interest. So I thought, what to study to kind of cover that and I found that international affairs was something that you know had a lot of aspects of the things that I liked and, and the good thing about um, the states when you're there in, in university you can uh, study in your like have a major and then have many different minors or like courses that you do um, so you can explore as you as you like to a certain extent um, which which I liked a little bit more um, and I mean the, the UK was a possibility but then in the end kind of I decided the states um, would be better for me and mm -hmm. I, I think it was I think it was for that time in my life. So you, as you said you did international affairs I mean that's quite far away from motorsport uh, how did you find those was it three four years that you, you spent in America was it was it just a good time in general? Yeah, I think mo most of how I mean, I experienced uni was a lot of, um, you know, like self building, understanding, you know, how to be on your own, um, uh, just all of that sort of stuff, as well as, you know, studying, but I don't, I think what I took out of it more than the learning aspect was um, the independence, the growth. Um, and just, yeah, I think that that was it more for me than more than anything. And I felt like I actually learned more after university when I had like my first job and, um, you know, being in the real world gave me more kind of real life experience. And that's where I felt more confident and more myself, not really in the classroom. No. So once you left uni, what, yeah. was, what was the sort of the plan? Did you want to try and pursue this motorsport thing or did you want to 
just get a real job, quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. That it was it was a really no one tells you that <laughs> everyone's like, okay, you need to graduate high school. Okay, check. You need to graduate university, check. But no one tells you that like that time after uni is like not fun. You don't know where you're going, you don't have that feeling of like uncertainty. Am I gonna get a job here? Am I you know, so there was a lot of uncertainty and I think it was like six months of for me of like being back home and not knowing what I wanted to do. Um, I mean, I knew what I wanted to do. I just didn't know how I wanted to, how I was going to do it. Basically, I wanted to go into um, more of like the finance side of things and, and um, look at the business world more. Um, and then I basically decided on a hunch that I was going to do a course um, and learn a little bit more about it and then decide from there. And thankfully, like that route worked out for me. So I did this course and then I applied for an internship and I got the internship. And then that just kind of kickstarted my career into, um, I don't know, I guess you would say like the finance um, investing world, um, which I did for like uh, two years or so. Um, and uh, and then basically I was kind of in between home and the UK and the States just doing all of that and uh, eventually I had to make a decision and, and pick a project that was purely based at home um, and then keep being there I had more flexibility and time for myself so this must have been um, so I graduated in 2014 so this must have been 2017 when I was like full-time in Saudi and not kind of juggling a lot of things and um, and not traveling too much and that's kind of when racing was became um let's say came to came to the spotlight because i had the time and i felt like okay i did this i explored this um, um finance and stuff but this kind of itching mm -hmm. craving uh that i had uh for for racing and for motorsport i couldn't kind of ignore anymore um, and and it wasn't until I had the flexibility and time to make that decision, um, and yeah, and that was in 2017. I noticed from your Instagram feed you're doing some sort of track days, as you mentioned, up to around 2015, 2016. Was that when you were still bouncing around between all of these different yeah. places? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So like whenever I'd come to the UK and I was here for like more than a week, or if it happened to be around a weekend. I'll, you know, try and get on a track day here and, and, and most of the time it was just like, I'd get my car and see if, you know, I'll get a, um, you know, an instructor for like an hour and then just go around the track. And that's kind of how it was for just to kind of, um, satisfy that, that passion of mine. Um, and, and, and at least like for me, it was even with go-karting, like whenever I could, I'll find a friend or something and we'll go and just go have a, like a arrive and drive and go around the track. Um, so it was just kind of that simple, simple things that I did just to keep it up and not completely ignore that side or that passion of mine, let's say. So I've heard that you were thinking about going racing a bit earlier because last year in 2019 was your first full season. But was there some thoughts around 2015, 2016 to try and go racing somewhere? Yeah, so as soon as I graduated, uh, I think this goes back to your other question, as soon as I graduated uni, I... Uh, got myself, I found out that you could go like racing and have like steps into racing. Um, in so in Florida, I found the three day racing school. Um, and I bought that for myself as a graduation. <laughs> present. So I went there. Um, it's quite hot. It was in the summer and it was in a single seater. So it was quite fun. And it, that was my first introduction to like proper racing, um, in the sense of like being behind a car. Uh, or like a racing car, let's say. And then it wasn't until, um, and that was like the first time and last time until 2018. Um, otherwise in between it was just like road cars and stuff. Um, and that, uh, that was like, that, that made me realize how much or how happy I was behind the wheel and behind the car. And, and um, it, it, it definitely encouraged me and, and um, gave me the that inspiration let's say that I needed so around I mean, correct me if I'm wrong but I think it was 2017 when you got your license was that that was in the United was it in the UK it was in the UK, UK correct yeah yeah it was in the UK so how did you find that because I've done it as well it's quite a stressful thing isn't it, it yeah. it's built up maybe to more than what it 
actually is how, how did you find that process yeah so so this whole like the racing license was like let's say you know I, i'm a person who has to-do lists right and at the or not to-do list but like things that i've been wanting to do and then one the top of the list was get your racing license and then the second one was probably learn guitar third one <laughs> was spanish and the fourth one was a marathon and now it's not marathon anymore <laughs> i've changed it but so I've had those, I had these goals for probably like four four years or so, and just because that racing license was like I kind of put it so high up and it seemed so unattainable, it definitely was scary and it was I was a bit like I didn't know anyone who did it I didn't know anyone who had been racing I had like no introduction I I didn't know what to expect, um, so I watched videos I kind of went researched online and did all that stuff. And to be honest, when I went there, I was like, so I was, I was so surprised. So like everyone was so nice um, and they could see that I was a girl and maybe, maybe that's why they were nice. I don't know why they were like, we need more girls racing. It's great. Um, and then like uh, I got in the, I, we did the written test, which took not like no time at all, you know, just like safety. And I was like, okay, this is not so bad, but I still felt like an exam. And then um, just getting in the car, doing the like couple a lap or two um, with the with the examiner was like a lot. It was basically a track day. Um, you don't go fast. You're basically showing that you're safe. You know what you're doing, and it's two laps. And you're and and they just want to know that you're safe and behind the wheel. And I think after that, I was. I finished and he's like, they're like, okay, all sorted. Here you go. And, then I, and I'm just like, what? That, that's it? That's all it took? Like in my head, it's just so much more complicated, so much yeah. more difficult. And and I think, I think like with a lot of things now, since I started racing, it's, I think a lot less about things in the sense of, I try not to make them so big in my head and I just go for it and try it. Because if I'm not gonna go and I, and you know you can you can ask people if you have people to ask, but if you don't, you just kind of need to get in there and 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 see for yourself, really. So unfortunately, motorsport is still at the time we're recording this still quite a male-dominated sport. So you know, getting your racing license, being a Saudi female racing driver, you're, yeah. I guess, breaking down a lot of stereotypes about the sport at this point. Did uh, did anything like affect your decisions? Were people saying anything early on, or was it all quite supportive within the motorsport world? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, like I, a lot of people didn't know. Um, uh, I mean, I kept it quite uh, like quiet for a while because it was something quite big for me, and it was something that I was it was I was doing it for myself and didn't really think of like the bigger picture, to be honest, and. Um, and and when I decided to race and I decided to sign up, I signed up probably it was like May of 2018 for the race in October. And I hadn't told um, so a lot, like, like a lot of like, let's say integral people that I was going to race. And when the time came to tell them and, and it was my parents I'm talking about, <laughs> um, I was like, OK, um, you know, kind of that I'm. I'm, I've been wanting to go racing and, you know, that my passion for cars. Well, I signed up. Uh, and you know this is a dream of mine, and I really hope that you know you'll support me through this. And and to, to, first of all, like they were they were a little bit quiet, a little bit um, uh, they didn't they, they were apprehensive, but there wasn't really a um, uh, there was no no, but there was also <laughs> wasn't an excitement. It was so I basically let let it brew for a while, and then I came back. And, and I explained to them, I'm like, okay, listen, I found a team. I found this is how it works. And we went through it together because I was experiencing it for the first time as well. So I explained to them, you know, this is, you get a racing, you have to go for a team and this is a car, you can hire the car and just going through the details. And I think just the, the fact that, they, you know, they did trust me and they knew um, that, you know, this decision was something that I thought through. Um, they were very, very supportive. And in the end of the day, like they were the most people that mattered to me to be behind me. Um, and every, in terms of everyone else, I think they just found out when I got on track and they saw me on track for the first time. It was like, oh, my God, who is this? Who is this girl? Um, and that's actually what one of the racers said <laughs> at the end of the race. Um, this Emirati driver came. He was like, where did you come from? And I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> my first race. So, yeah. Oh, that's a great story. Um, so I'm surprised, actually, because my question, well, my next question was, 
I think you were the first Saudi woman to ever hold a racing license. Maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong there, but you didn't tell anyone, so you didn't, you know, say to the press or whatever who might have been interested about this story. Uh, no, so uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm the first. I'm definitely like one of the first few. Uh, mm. uh, I think there was like three or three, three other girls or four other girls. I'm, to be honest, I'm not sure about that, but. Um, I did speak to my friend at the Federation, and the Federation, I had to get approval from the Saudi Federation. They gave me the license as well, because I had to get a um, Saudi license to be racing in uh, the UAE. Um, so, they definitely everyone was aware of it, but I no, I didn't tell the press, but I think the, 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 um, the circuit told the, the press, and they organized for uh, people to cover it. But... Um, but I didn't honestly like I didn't I was going in with the fact that this is my first race This is really big for me and I didn't think of of anything else past that and it wasn't until the end of my first race and it was it was a positive result. I think I was fighting for third um, uh, overall and uh, two, I think it was like two or three corners from the last um, we were all like bunched up and as getting you know like the, the, the nerves were just there and then I got ended up basically opening the door two cars came past me um, and I still finished positively like you know fifth and was quite happy with that but um, coming out of the car you know I was like oh, obviously adrenaline rush that feeling like no other and you're just and I remember thinking and I was shaking like from from the adrenaline um, and then someone comes and asks me like over the interview and they're like how does it feel to be the first Saudi or no What's a historic moment? Um, how does it feel to be the first Saudi uh, to finish a motor race? And I and I literally paused and looked at him and I was like, oh my, like in my head, I didn't say mm -hmm. it, but I was like, oh my God, this is historic. You know, like it didn't, it didn't occur to me because I was only thinking about this is the race. And I, and I put everything else aside and just wanted to get in the car. And then afterwards, to be honest, like the support, the encouragement, everything I got from the drivers, from press, from people, everyone was just behind me. And it was like support that I didn't didn't even think of and ended up having. And it was, yeah, it was really great, really great to have that. I guess you didn't want to put too much pressure on yourself by telling loads of people that this was happening. Because at the end of the day, you just want to enjoy it, don't you? But I guess it's kind of hard when it's, you know, if, if loads of people know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they, and, they, and they ended up knowing and it was at least I didn't plan it. It happened at the good time just after the race. The emotions were raw and I managed um, uh, to speak to the press and, and kind of convey how I was feeling and stuff. So, so it worked out. But um, yeah, I think it was a good call for me not to think about that. Otherwise, I don't know where my head would have been. <laughs> Um, I think maybe you can correct me once again if this is wrong, but I think you won a race before the end of that sort of little season as well. How how did that feel to so quickly go from just doing your first race to you know standing on the top step of a you know a big podium like that? Yeah, it was um, to be honest. So it was we basically did we we, we were doing twenty minute races, um, and then that time we decided that we were that, that, that we we're going to change things up and do a enduro. So it was going to be. <laughs> A 24 25 minute with one mandatory pit stop and I decided that I was going to do the full thing that I didn't want to have another driver and some people decided to have two drivers um, so I was running in fourth I think uh, and um, fourth or fifth and um, I came in for my pit stop and and we decided that whatever the the, the leaders would do I would do the opposite and mm -hmm. Um, thanks to like a really good pit strategy and I had practiced it before and I knew what to expect in terms of what I needed, like how I needed to maximize this time or make it as, as, as quick as possible. So I went in a lap after them and when I came out, like I couldn't see any of the cars around me and I wasn't really sure. Anyway, so I, I just kept driving and there's all 20 minutes left to the race and um, maybe like two, three laps in, I'm getting goosebumps saying this. The two, three laps in, I, I see like headlights behind me because it's like a little bit dark now. And I'm like, why am I seeing cars behind me? And I was like, who's this behind me? And it was like for a split second, I thought it was like, um, like I was slow and there was a car behind me and there's no radio. So I wasn't sure where, what position I was. Mm. And my, and my pit wall wasn't telling me either. So I wasn't sure what was going on. Anyway, at 10 minutes to the end of the race, I realized that there's potential that these cars behind me 
there were like three or four cars that was the people who I thought were the leaders of the race. Mm-hmm. And and then I was like, okay, this probably is the, the the it's probably the leaders, but I'm probably behind them because there was I was there was no way that I was gonna think that I was mm-hmm. first because it was just too much pressure. <laughs> I think anyway. At that point, I just wanted to pull a gap and was kept going, kept going. And apparently, like I was like purple sectoring, like sector one, sector three. It was just like the flow was coming. Um, and then, um, like a lap from the end, I was like, probably I could potentially be first, but I have no idea. Let's see if I get this checkered flag. <laughs> I'm like getting getting to the last corner, and the checkered flags wave to me, and I'm like, I look at I look at the checkered flag, I look at the pit wall, and I'm like pointing and they're pointing at me going like first and I'm like me I'm first like <laughs> telling me I'm first and it was like a complete shock because like I was the whole time I was just like get the job done get the job done and uh I remember like the marshals and everyone waving and congratulating me and me and I'm still going like how did I'm the winner like did I win this race and uh when I came out of the car I looked at them and I was like how how is how how have i won like what's what's <laughs> what happened there and they're like it's the pit stop we we you know we killed the pit stop we got them you were like i think i could have been like 30 20 seconds behind them and i and i did i think it was a minute and a bit or like some so I, I basically had a much quicker pit stop and and beat them there but uh it was it was an unbelievable feeling like yeah definitely being on the top step and and just having those, the boys were not very happy as well. So that was a little bit uh, encouraging for me, I have to say. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm definitely rubbing someone the wrong way. I'm doing something right. Well, that's a great story. Um, and those cars were the Toyota 86, if, that, if I'm yeah. correct there. So when you made the decision to come over to the UK and do Formula 4, it's quite a big step, isn't it? Very mm-hmm. different cars. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was so. So with the with the Toyotas, basically, they're they're. I just I, I looked at it, I looked at it initially as I'm like, okay, I'm there's no like I wasn't gonna I wasn't thinking of Formula One. Or like this is not something achievable for me. I'm a little bit older than everyone, you know. Probably, you know, endurance racing is something more realistic, and that's why I decided to go into GT cars and 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 that's actually what was available to me at the time in the UAE um, or in the region where I was in. And then after like speaking to lots of people in the industry and at this point, like I had been put in touch with a coach, um, I had like good guidance and and um, making decisions to what I was going to do next, whether I was going to go into like Janetta and continue in this route. Um, and a lot of people said, listen, in order to like to hone your skills, to sharpen your skills, you don't have a karting background. You don't have that like connection yet to the car. And you need to experience that raw rawness in the car and the, the feel. Um, and they basically advised me and they're like, listen, it's a big thing. It's going to be a big jump. It's going to be a tough year. You're going to be in the back, but keep your head down. You need to learn. And um, then I jumped in and made the decision to do that. And I think definitely a very good good one and, and great advice from them because it's it's driving a single seater versus driving a GT car. You know, there there's no assists. You you feel everything underneath you. You're in full control of the car. So it's it's very much you're you're forming a connection. Let's say so. Now when I jump into a GT car or jump into any car in that matter, I'm a lot more in tune and I can get to grips with it a little bit more because I know how it's supposed to feel. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a big a big learning year. Um, lots of challenges. And, you know, I think the the biggest thing was managing my expectation and, you know, coming in, knowing, um, you know, having the right goals, you know, ahead of me. So, so it's, I mean, you were racing against some quick drivers in the Toyotas, but when you go to the, you know, the junior categories, Formula 4, I guess the quality of drivers is, is quite insane. I mean, I, I, I don't know for sure, but I, I guess the, the top guys in F4 are multiple kart champions and, you know, they've been doing it for 10, 10 years. So I guess were you quite realistic going to there that, you know, you're going to get some good results, but it's going to have to come along with some some learning as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I, I knew going in that most of the, the guys had you know, 10 years more experience than I had have been probably growing up doing this. Um, so I knew that I was coming in and I was making up the ground. Um, so essentially like learning as I went on. Um, and f- for me, it was like, you know, my f- I remember my first race, um, 
my my engineer was like the most important thing you keep the car on track and you get to the finish line you know like that's my goal my goal wasn't to go and you know get ahead of the car and slowly slowly you know the goals when I got better when I got quicker it was like okay I'm not going to be and initially I was like okay I, I don't want to be last and then it was like okay I want to be 10th you know I want to so having those goals and have being realistic or what I could achieve really did help um, but of course you know I did go through a lot of a few shunts, um, a, a lot of offs in testing, um, dealing with like, you know, different temperatures being, in, you know, super cold, all of a sudden mm -hmm. raining, just, you know, getting behind that and, and getting to grips to that in months um, was, was, was definitely a challenge, but I was, I was kind of open to learning and, and it helped to have the attitude of, listen, things are going to go wrong, but you're going to learn. So mm -hmm. it was, is how I went through, I guess I got through the first year. I think I was at that Brands Hatch first race. Was it? It was like a mix between wet and dry and really uh -huh. terrible conditions. <laughs> I guess it was a bit of a, you know, step into the unknown. Oh my god! It was definitely that. Um, we hadn't had much wet testing in, in uh, wet testing generally that year or last year, and um, then we get to the race and most of our our you know tests and practice were all uh, in dry conditions. And come race um and it's like changeable it's a bit raining it's green they're throwing all these words at me and i, I literally <laughs> get in the car waiting to get on uh, you know the starting grid and i'm just laughing i'm i'm like i'm like oh my god this is like I, there was nothing i could do i was like i'm gonna laugh it out because you know it was it was nerve-wracking and then i was like you know this the situation is is not something i expected and it, you know obviously you can't plan for whatever it was going to happen but I just had a laugh and, and was like, okay, I need to finish this race. I need to keep the car on track. How am I going to do that? And and I just basically played it safe my first race and wasn't really going for anything crazy. But I think you, did you get points in that yeah, first event? I, I mean, yeah, I finished 10th <laughs> because I guess some other people were going for a lot more and ended up, you know, going off and, and maybe hitting. I don't remember what happened exactly, but it was yeah, crazy. I, yeah, from other people's mistakes, I may I gained some places. And, uh, sorry, and I basically ended up um, because I finished, uh, and I I finished ahead ahead of them, made less mistakes. So, yeah. Maybe if I could just jump back before your first race, if that's all right, because or in Formula Four that is, because I'm interested to know on a scale like Formula Four, what to, or how do the teams prepare you? Do you get into a simulator? Do they give you like a fitness routine? you know, plans, how does that sort of first weekend come about? Um, so, uh, like, generally, like, pre-season testing starts end of end of mid to end February. So it's probably, like, five or six weeks where the team will organize um, to go to as many tracks as we can, to get as much track time in, in the tracks we're going to race in. Um, you know, it doesn't matter the conditions, if it's raining, or you just want to be on track, you want to get to grips with the car. Um, um, and, and so it's basically a lot of that, uh, sim work because we're generally on the road most of the time and trying to get from track to track, it's not as frequent, let's say pre-season, uh, maybe in the off season. Yes, but not, uh, but I didn't have, I didn't do any of that for me. It was just mm -hmm. straight into the car as much experience as I could, uh, on track. And, um, and that was the prep. It was like probably like 15 days or, or maybe 20 I, I can't remember but like like a, a few days of testing and uh, and then just get in there and drive the car go fast <laughs> <laughs> I mean I think I think you've mentioned it before the, the first part of the season obviously was a little bit tough but I guess that's all part of learning a brand new mm -hmm. anything really do you have any sort of fun like memories I mean it must have been a bit up and down but were there any sort of fun moments you had in there any any good laughs along that first part of the journey while you're still learning uh, yeah, yeah. There's definitely um, there's definitely a few. I think um, one that's one that stood out. I think was one. I was in um, where was it in Knock Hill? No, I can't remember where it was. And and I was talking to my engineer, and I was like, okay, you know, how am I going to do this? And like I was overthinking things basically. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where am I? What do I do here? And I was maybe probably like two or three seconds behind. There was a lot of uh, yeah, I had to make up a lot of time, and it was it was a case of me just stop stop to like 
stop overthinking things and just feel and drive. Like I was, I was a little bit like, yeah, in my head. And he's like, he looked at me and he's like, listen, we're not going to do a debrief. We're not going to do a session. We're not going to go over anything. I just want you to go fast. And I was like, <laughs> that's your advice. <laughs> your advice to me. And he's like, yeah, that's all I'm going to tell you. And I'm like, okay. So, so then that ended up being a joke between me and my engineer. And it was just go fast. Right. And he's like, yeah, go fast. That's all I'm asking you. So, so I think that was a funny one. Um, a few times where um, I, uh, well, a lot of the, the offs that I had or just getting in the gravel, getting in, um, was, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was Donington, which was one of the tougher tracks to, in the wet, especially because it's quite greasy. Uh, when I was there on, on a test day, I just kept getting off, going off, going off. And, um, and then the, 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 the truck driver who, who kept having to rescue me, he's like, listen, hon, I don't want to keep seeing you here anymore. And I was like, oh, believe me, I don't want to see you either. <laughs> I'm trying, you know, and, and it was a matter of like now looking back, my tires were too cold. I was going too slow, had no grip. But obviously at the time I didn't know that and I didn't know how I could just build on that and grow. But yeah, I mean, uh, and then, and then obviously having to come back in the cars and bits and, you know, having to explain to the team like, hey, yeah, I did make a mistake. Um, and, like, you know, there, there are fun, some fun moments and some like unfortunate moments when you see the car up on the, on the, on the, I don't know, the flatbed and you're just like, oh, my God, this is not going to be fun. And, and this is me wasting my time. And, oh, my God, why am I, you know, so there, there are definitely ups and downs. But, yeah, there are lo- lots of lots of good moments as well. But saying that the season in terms of results at least got better and better as it went on um how enjoyable was it to sort of get in the routine of just you know getting closer and closer and faster and faster I, I guess it's quite a morale boosting sort of experience really yeah yeah I think um I say I said this like I realized this is like before, like initially towards the beginning of the season I was like chasing uh I was chasing the pack um and then eventually I was I was with the pack and then eventually started racing the pack um and when i got to that point where i was racing and i was kind of like in scraps with one or two cars here and there it just gives you big because like obviously you can go around the track on your own in circles and you can try and get faster and faster but wheel being like wheel to wheel racing gains like that confidence you, you know what to do you know where to position the car you know what risks you can and can't take um and it obviously is why I want to do it. I want to be racing. I want to be with them, um, and then getting that good result. And I remember, like for me, like in my my first like ninth position was like, oh, I felt really good about it, and I felt I was like really happy that I you know I overtook this or or like the few cars that I did. And then when I came eighth, that other the, the, I think it was my best finish. I I was like over the moon, and 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 I felt like it was my win, you know, because it was. It was, I had like overall good performance. I didn't make as many mistakes as let's say I usually do. And, um, and I think those moments are what keep you going. And, you know, you in motorsport, I'm coming to realize there are many moments where you're, because there's all obviously, like everyone says, there's only one winner. Yeah, that's true. But, um, but there are also like, if you can set your goals and, and have that and have those wins for yourself, those would and kind of, that's what kind of pushed me and, and got me more excited throughout the the season, definitely. So we're a couple of sort of months gone by now since the end of that season, 2019. Mm -hmm. How do you sort of reflect on it now in in retrospect? Uh, I I guess a really good year for for learning and doing something completely different must have been quite exciting. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a year first. You know, I I learned so much as, as a driver. I mean, even within myself, um, just kind of managing everything, um, being on top of, you know, my racing and, and my you know, like fitness and just like the whole the whole thing, I think. And having to do that and being like, throwing myself into that situation, there was so much now looking back that I could expect. And there's sometimes that I was maybe overachieving and and I wanted a little bit more. But um, now that I look back, definitely had I had, you know, a great team behind me. Um, some great teammates as well that helped me and, and helped me figure out what I needed to do and, and get through or what, what, what you're supposed to do um, uh, if you wanted to win and, and, and get there and have good results. But 
um, yeah, I think just as a learning year, uh, I look, it was it was a way of me. I, I was okay with being in the back. I was okay with um, not um, not. Uh, I wasn't like I didn't really put myself down, and and I think that was the the biggest positive. And I think this year it's uh, obviously a lot more different than that. It's different attitude, different approach. I have some experience, um, and I can put it into practice. And it's been a busier off season for you because you've you've done a few races. Uh, you did uh, did a race with the electric Jaguar I Pace at home as well. I guess that's quite a, a weird experience. Firstly, racing at home, but secondly, racing an electric car. Uh, how was that weekend and the, sort of the build up to that? Yeah, that was that was an amazing experience. I mean, uh, Jaguar were like I was fortunate enough to to be invited by Jaguar to come and participate in in, in the race at home, which was something I didn't imagine would happen, um, you know, because like, I mean, we, we did have, we do have a track, but not one that's running races and championships. So the only track that would have been able to participate in would have been the street circuit um, that they do for the um, Formula E, which was the second year running. Um, and obviously having had like a year of experience of racing and, and, and now that giving me the opportunity to race at home in front of a home crowd uh, was unbelievable, it was unreal to be like more than it is like when I look back at that, the, that weekend, I don't remember the race as much as I remember like the reactions and the people and just being on home soil and, and kind of being me at home and mm. being you know, um, me as a racing driver, not me just as Rima. Uh, so it was really cool, really cool and, and a very like humbling experience and a very proud moment as well, definitely. And those cars, they're quite different there. I guess they're <laughs> nearly a complete opposite to the Formula 4 car. They're, they're really big. Um, the electric, how, how was that driving or racing an electric car? Because I guess a lot of us are going to be driving electric cars in the next sort of 10 years was it much different to drive uh yeah so so the cars are basically like uh two tons i or I, don't, I can't remember at the moment but they're really really heavy uh they're four-wheel drive um obviously they don't have any sound no gears um two pedal like the, like basically no clutch so just and it was it's very different um because of the fact you don't think about the sound you don't think that they're they're just the balance of the car, and, and initially I was. It's it just you feel like you're um, rolling a lot more, mm-hmm. let's say, in the car because you're obviously higher up. It's a lot heavier, uh, but again, it was also four wheel drive, and I hadn't raced a four wheel drive. I also hadn't raced on a street circuit before that. The walls were so close, <laughs> um, and I initially was just getting my head around that and, and, and getting used to being so close to walls. And I honestly have so much respect for. For you know all these like street circuit drivers, Formula E, like now like the Monaco, like Singapore, they're the driving in in you know with such small margins, you know, just kind of really shows you um, like what it's at and and you know how how there's it's basically very unforgiving. Um, but the car was definitely it was fun. It was like I would say more touring car. Um, Mm-hmm. It is. That's what it is. An electric touring car, but it was more on that side of things, and you could. They, they were quite sensitive, actually, as a car. Um, so you could really do. You do feel. Um, uh, you do feel a lot, but the fact that you don't have gears, or for me at least, the fact that I didn't have gears and I didn't, I couldn't really predict. Um, like there were like subconscious things that I was mm-hmm. using when I was racing a, a you know a petrol car. Um, so uh, those things weren't there, and imagine even like starting, um, starting grid without the engines revving, you know, just lights. Um, so you could just hear your own self breathing. Like it was very, very different experience, definitely. Um, and you did quite a bit more racing over over the winter, or what we call the winter as well. Um, Formula Four in the UAE. Um, I think you did quite a lot of races in that in there as well. Was it nice to just sort of stay in the zone, even if it wasn't the main championship you're doing this year? Yeah, yeah definitely. I think that that it was great to go, get back in a Formula Four and in tracks that I was also familiar with. You know, like the, the, we changed the layouts between the two tracks that we're in, but you know more or less you're on two tracks and just that gave me like 
the, the ability to try things and, and just test things in terms of wheel to wheel racing. Like I was, you know, no longer the rookie, you know, I was definitely like in the midst of it all, um, having to attack and defend at the same time and things that I hadn't done obviously before in, 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 uh, in a single seater, which I did before in, in the GT, but it was just nice to get there and, and, and kind of show pace and, be put in the situation where I needed to decide, you know, what was the right strategy? What was the right thing for me to do? Is this enough room here? Can I actually overtake? And mm. just testing things out was, was great. Um, and yeah, it was, I had such a, like a good time there. The, the grid was a good number of cars. And um, again, like, yeah, I think even standards of drivers, you know, was quite good. So I was, it was just good to get some obviously running in the off season, not just, you know, testing, but racing. And, and I think that that giving, having that confidence is, is what I need moving forward, just doing as much as I can in, in that sense. And the results as well backed up, you know, a good a good mm. couple of races there. Um, I guess that's nice sort of confidence boost going into 2020, you know, similar car, really good results. I guess you look forward now to 2020 and what you can do in that car once we get racing again. Yeah, definitely. I think um, just like I said, the confidence and knowing um, not being out of the car for so many months uh, definitely helped. But you coming coming in here, of course, you need to readjust to the car, the the you know the weather, the tracks. There's a lot of other things that you have to get your head around. But um, it, as soon as you kind of get in touch and are, let's say you know how it's supposed to feel. It's, it's like good momentum and, and um, yeah, hopefully like, I don't know when we're going to start, but um, uh, yeah, I think the, the sooner the better so that all my, you know, off uh, or like winter season um, work doesn't go uh, or uh, isn't forgotten, let's say. <laughs> uh, but no, I think it's definitely a difficult time for everyone. So I, I'm hopefully going to get some sim work in and, and try and do as much as I can at home um, to just get ready and prepped and fresh. So when the season starts, I'll be ready. So you're doing British F4 again this year. Is it mm -hmm. a new team as well? So is there any different aims here? Or are you, I guess, going for trying to get some top fives and maybe a podium or something this year as well? Yeah, I think definitely uh, the goal would be, you know, running, running in the mid pack, you know, showing pace, being consistent. Um, and, and, and the goal or, you know, would be great if, if, top five podium like you said like that would be fantastic um but but yeah i think realistically being in the mid pack and working my way up i think that's that's how i'll do it initially just step by step uh small goals um but big dreams <laughs> and something that's interesting that sort of is in parallel to your career now is that the w series is obviously becoming a thing um mm -hmm. Is that something maybe you'd be interested in the future? I mean, if we look to 2021, you know, if, if hopefully it's still going and you know everything's still going as it should be, would you like to maybe go that way? Yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of options ahead of me and, and that's definitely one of them. Um, but for now, I think my focus is purely on what I'm doing now and, and getting to grips with this car and showing the results and pace. But yeah, in W Series, it's a different car. You know, it's an F3, so there, that, that's going to require testing and getting ready. Um, but, but yeah, I think uh, ideally, you know, moving up a category, um, if all goes well, that, that would be the goal. And I guess if we look to the future beyond that, you say GT racing, have you, you know, would that be in the UK or what do you think? Would you like to go around the world? Because there's loads of European, you know, American championships, for example. Yeah, uh, to be uh, to be honest, I haven't thought that. <laughs> um, uh, and, you know, I think one of the days, you know, racing in Le Mans would always be like top up there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for now, I think we just see how I get on, see where, you know, this racing will take me. Um, and and yeah, I don't know. I think we'll, we'll we'll both be surprised in a couple of years where I am. It'll be a surprise <laughs> me and you. <laughs> um, I think last question really is sort of outside racing. Have you got anything that you want to do? You said you had that bucket list of a couple of things that you want to take off. Yeah. Uh, how how do you think they'll be going over the next couple of years? Yeah. Um. I to be honest, like most of what I'm thinking of now, and and like I said, like I'm quite new to racing, so a lot of the things that I'm doing and and training for is racing related. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've taken up like which is which is cool because I've taken up cycling. 
um, I've, you know, in, for my endurance and, and just um, overall, like just better mental and, and uh, physical um, fitness. And it's, it's, it's kind of gotten me thinking about potentially doing a triathlon here or there, um, you know, setting new set challenges and new things out for myself. So I think for now, it's it's very much um, thinking about the future would be, you know, racing and, and how I can improve m myself as a driver. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd say that that would be the goal. Just be like my engineer would say, I just need to go. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, that's one of my questions. Um, I think you've been an inspiration for a lot of people, you know, going on this journey. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for, for sharing it over the last hour or so. Um, yeah, thank you for your time and obviously best of luck for 2020 when we get started. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. And yeah, hopefully we'll be out on track soon racing and see some positive results as well. <laughs>